Seventh, 2022nd, York County Council meeting to order. At this time, I'll recognize the Honorable Brandon Guffey from District 3, who will lead us in invocation and Pledge of Allegiance. I'm sorry, District 6. <laughs> Dear Lord, I want to pray that you protect us and watch over us tonight, not only within York County, but throughout the world, as many are in, uh, involved in conflict. Lord, I pray that you will protect this council tonight, allow us to make the best decisions for the people moving forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If the following individuals would come forward and meet our county attorney at the front of the um, podium to be sworn into office for our newly appointed board and commission members, Tabitha Jeffries, Keep York County Beautiful at large slot, and Kristen Kelly, Keep York County Beautiful also an at large seat. If you are here and will make your way forward, maybe you are not here. Well, we'll look forward to swearing them in next time. At this time, we move to the appearances section of our um, agenda, and I'll recognize our public works director, Eric Reckett, who will come and recognize Wes Blackwelder on his service with York County. Good evening. Thanks again, Council, for allowing me to uh, recognize and honor this uh, uh, retiree, Mr. Wes Blackwilder. Um, he's kind of a, probably a legend around here. He's been around, he's been with York County for over 41 years. So wow. all of that time was spent in road maintenance and primarily as a motor grader operator. So he's been on every gravel road. If you've been on a gravel road, he's maintained it. If you live on a gravel road, you probably know Wes. So uh, really gonna miss him. Uh, he's been around for a while. He's made a lot of friends and and done a lot for the county and served well and uh, wish him best in his retirement. I think you want to say something? Oh, all right then. <laughs> <laughs> but again, we'll miss you and uh, present you with this plaque and uh, congratulate you on your service. Thank you. Mr. Blackwelder, on behalf of the council, we do appreciate your service you. to the county. Thank you, sir. At this time, we move forward with our public forum session. This is an opportunity for individuals in the community to speak to the council. Uh, it's limited to 30 minutes, so two, two minutes per individual who signed up tonight. When I call your name, if you'll come forward and please state your name and give your address. And if you'll pay attention to the, um, the screen that's up in front of you, when it starts blinking, that means your two minutes are up. and. Um, I'll have to cut you off if you don't cut yourself off, and I hate doing that. Uh, another thing I'll let you know, if you're here for a public hearing item, we have several public hearings. Uh, you're allowed to speak at that without having a time limitation. At this time, I'll, I'll recognize Jeff Carroll. <clears throat> Good evening, Council. Thank you for this opportunity. And I would like to take this time to thank York County uh, Sheriff. Thank you for protecting and serving this great county. I'll make this short and sweet. This is in regards to the Morning Star Tower. We, the people of York County, are here to voice our First Amendment right. Number one, stop discriminating against York County seniors. Number two, stop religious discrimination now. Number three, we the people of York County demand drop the lawsuit now. Thank you, God bless each and every one of you, God bless York County, and God bless America. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I believe this says Nicholas Papanato. Uh, good evening, or good afternoon, I guess I should say, commissioners. 
My name is Nicholas Papanicolaou, and I live at Heritage Court at 375 Starlight Drive. As you can see, I'm handicapped. Uh, I've got somewhere around 5% of my vision left. I've been looking forward for years to the tower being built, a building with floor-to-ceiling windows that would give me light that I could see. And I have seen for 10 years obstreperous interference by the county. I understand that today the Council for Morningstar filed a motion for sanctions against the county uh, attorney uh, for certain infractions. For me, this is very difficult because I need to have an apartment with light. I want to be spending time here, and I feel that I have been prevented from doing so because of the county's actions. It is not right, commissioners. And I think that it is time that you understood that the county attorney works for you and not the other way around. My wife and I despaired in September when all of a sudden this suit that we understood had been withdrawn was renewed by your counsel without proper notice to Morningstar. And so in despair, we actually, because I'm spending time here, I teach uh, uh, at Morningstar University, we had to go ahead and buy an apartment in the old building, which is not what I want to do because it's dark, it's, uh, the lighting is inadequate, both the interior lighting and the windows. It's not what I want. So I want you to know that there are personal costs that are involved here. Your fight, as it is turning out now because of these actions of your county council, is not going to be just with Morningstar. I think you need to be aware of the fact that people like me as individuals if this parody continues, are going to be taking measures. I certainly feel that my First Amendment rights have been affected adversely. It's been more than 10 years that this parody has been going on. And I would like to urge you to reconsider. The fuse is very, very short now. Very short. Thank and you, I, sir. Uh, am I at my two minutes? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. OK, <laughs> thank you. Please do what it says up there. If you trust in God, be aware of people like me. This has a cost to me. Dana, Diana Simone. Diana Simone, 375 Starlight Drive, 29715. Good evening. I live in York County, and I'm a member of Morning Star Church. When I spoke with you last month, I told you I was a former investigative journalist and that I've traveled for 20 years around the world reporting on religious persecution against Christians. On my first trip to China, I interviewed Pastor Samuel Lam, who was in prison 20 years for his faith. That didn't stop him, of course. When he left prison, he started another church in a city of 14 million people, and that is where I interviewed him. On his doorstep, where he insisted on standing with me in full view of everyone, Pastor Lamb, I said, aren't you afraid that the grannies are going to see you talking with a foreign journalist? Well, Pastor Lamb was very smart. He wanted the grannies to see him uh, talking with me. The grannies are paid by the CCP to watch and report everything going on. So Pastor Lamb stood there with me and later showed me photos of other journalists who had stood on the same exact doorstep, including one right up the street from us, Billy Graham. Pastor Lamb knew the power of what we, we refer to and what each of us who did not compare our notes have talked about the First Amendment. He knew about the power of press, the freedom of the press. And uh, he knew it, I know it, and I think everyone in this room knows it. And that is why last month when we were here, there was a lot of local media, and they may be here tonight also, reporting on religious persecution in York County. How can that be? For all the wonderful things happening in York County, do we want to be known as a place where Christians are persecuted for their faith? I don't think so. That's why I ask that you would drop this lawsuit against Morningstar, that you would let us finish our tower, that you would not let our county be run by attorneys, and that you would let York County be known as a place where the First Amendment is still in effect. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Ms. Simone. Bill Nugent.
Good evening, Council. I'm William Nugent of 375 Starlight Drive, Fort Mill, South Carolina, resident of York County. I want to mention that Morningstar is much more than about senior housing. We are one of the largest public charities in York County. We serve the people of York County. We reach the homeless, we feed the poor, we minister to the sick. We have a K through 12 school and a university on our campus. Additionally, we have a large diverse church that meets on our campus. Our ministry to senior citizens is just one ministry among more than 30 categories of help to people, and that's just in York County. Additionally, we reach 193 countries of the world through our overseas outreach, through various means, and currently we're raising funds for Ukrainian refugees. Uh, the reason that I bring, I make, I mention that is to make the point that this lawsuit drains our finances and it hinders our ability to help the people of York County and people all over the world. It's a terrible waste of funds. Whatever funds we spend on this lawsuit and the time, talent, and treasure of our people to deal with the lawsuit and its contingencies lessens our ability to help people all over the world. Human lives are at stake. Completion of the tower means expansion of our facilities and we have the financing in place. And by the way, the tower is self-funding. It is ultimately self-funded. What we put in, we get out so that we can help thousands of more people than we're helping now. I request that you direct the county attorney to dismiss the lawsuit. Let us complete our tower. The lawsuit was dismissed in August of 2020. It should be dismissed again. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Mr. Nugent. Debbie Anthony. Debbie Anthony, 117 David Court, Fort Mill, 29715. I spoke to you at the last meeting and I left you with a question. I haven't gotten an answer, so I'm back again. Jesus spoke a parable to his disciples about a judge and a woman that kept coming to this judge. One day Jesus told his disciples a story to illustrate their need for constant prayer and to show them that they must keep praying until the answer comes. There was a city judge, he said, a very godless man who had great contempt for everyone. A widow of that city came to him frequently to appeal for justice. The judge ignored her for a while, but eventually she got on his nerves. I fear neither God or man, he said to himself, but this woman bothers me. I'm going to see that she gets justice, for she is wearing me out with her constant coming. Then the Lord said, if even an evil judge can be worn down like that, don't you think God will surely give justice to the people who plead with him day and night? This parable is not an exact parallel of us, of our situation. You are not godless people who hold everyone in contempt. That being said, you are trampling on our constitutional right to freedom of religion. There are many older folks like me who want to come here and live in the tower at Fort Mill. And my question remains the same. Why are you saying no to them? I just don't understand it. Do you? Thank you, Ms. Anthony. Larry Bird. Good evening. I think you all know me. Larry Bird, 375 Starlight Drive, Fort Mill. Thank you for allowing me the time to speak. I have a couple of points to give you. Why are we here discussing the Morningstar Tower again? Why? The issue was decided and approved in August of 2020. Have the goalposts been moved for approval? Why did York County renege on their approval of this tower project? Especially by the non-communication you gave to Morningstar. 
plus waiting until the last minute to deliver bad news that does ring a bell for so many people. The plans of the faith-based community were put to a screeching halt. We keep asking the same question over and over. Why, why, why? Why did you change your decision and stop the building of the tower? So ask the following. Does your attorney manipulate the council? Is it time to draw a lawsuit? Yes, it is time for you to draw up the lawsuit. Is it, it is a time to have a new day in your county. It is time to trust one another and be fair with the church as you are with other building projects. It is time to stop religious discrimination. It is time to allow Morningstar to exercise our First Amendment rights. No more delay. No more arguments. It is time to stop the blame game and get on with business. It certainly could be time for you to replace your current attorney. Why? To allow Morningstar liberty and justice. It is time to build that tower. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Bird. Matt Martin. Good evening. Matt Martin, uh, 2429 Gibson Street, Rock Hill, South Carolina, 29732. Uh, thank you for letting, listening to me this evening. Um, the main thing I wanted to mention is I, I, I am a part of Morningstar. <coughs> Obviously, not old enough to go be part of the tower community, but I do believe in it. And as a you know, as a member of Morningstar, I see all the uh, the advantages that will come with it. Um, also, I remember I was here last month uh, with the group, and I remember I believe it was you, uh, Chairwoman, that specifically said that you rarely see uh, big groups come out to support us something. Um, I know it was mentioned that there's a lot of times oppositions, but there's very rarely support. Last month we had almost 100 people here supporting this movement of, to get the tower. Today we have another a group here, not quite as big, but still a large group. And I can assure you that we will keep coming every month until something, is, until we get what we were looking for, until we get this lawsuit dropped. And as a taxpayer of Rock Hill, honestly, what's the point of, I don't, I don't like having to pay taxes to have lawsuits filed against a church. Even if I wasn't part of Morningstar, I don't think anyone here likes having their tax dollars spent on lawsuits like this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Douglas Smith. Good evening. Um, my name's Doug Smith. My address is 1573 Ferris Road. I'm here tonight to let you know that I would like to buy the home at 1573 Ferris Road. This would be my first home on my own. I have been looking for other properties prior to this for over two years. There are none are available in my price range. My parents are moving out of town and I would like to be settled before they move. I plan on making my life there in this community. And I have been a volunteer firefighter in the community for over eight years. I lived in Rock Hill for 23. If I plan to sell the property, Mike Delaney has first chance to buy it back. Please take all this into consideration. Thank you for my time. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Mike Delaney. Good evening. My name is Mike Delaney. I live at 1555 Ferris Road, and Doug, he's my new neighbor. He's been in my mom's old house now for about four months. Um, I'm asking for the rezoning because I, my wife and I bought our property about 17 years ago, and I put the house on my property for my mom and dad. Uh, my mom, my dad died before I ever even got finished. My mom died last fall. So I've got the two homes on my property, and when my mom died last fall, my first thought was just to leave it empty. I didn't want anybody in my mom's house, but it's just too nice of a house to let it sit. And Doug's dad, Steve, is, a, is an old friend of mine. I've known him for several years. 
he called me and needed a place to stay short term because they were moving. And I told him no, and I felt bad, so I called him back. I said, yeah, come on, I'll get the house cleaned up and ready for you. So they moved in last fall. They kind of fell in love with the place, and he started asking me if I would sell it. And I told him no. Once again, I felt bad. I had got to know Doug. Him and my boy are, are best friends now. So when I went and applied for the rezoning, I checked with zoning and planning first because I was aware of the issues. My wife and I were, we've been on that road almost longer than anybody now. We've seen more houses come to the road than, than what were there when we moved out there. And my first concern was more houses because I moved there to be in the country like everybody else there. So I checked with zoning and planning. I know the nice lady got tired of me calling her and saying, are you sure this is not gonna cause any problems? And she has assured me that this situation is different, that it will absolutely set precedence for nothing in the future. I don't wanna divide any more of my land. I don't want less than five acres. I want 105 acres. So I'm not gonna divide my land. I'm not gonna build any more houses and I'm only doing this more than anything to help Doug so he can get started with the next chapter of his life. And uh, I don't think it'll, it will pose any issues for anybody. I've talked to all my neighbors. They're all good with it. That's why nine of my 11 neighbors are not here complaining. Thank you for your time. Thank you, I appreciate Mr. it. Thank you, Mr. Delaney. Yes, I cannot read the first name of this individual. It looks like Johnston. Hall, maybe? Okay, that's fine, perfectly fine. <laughs> that concludes our uh, public forum, and those are the individuals who signed up. At this time, do we have a motion for consent agenda? Move, second. Motion and a second to approve consent agenda. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. Chairwoman, if I could ask a, just a brief moment before we head on. In case somebody saw me looking funny a while ago, I don't know if the wind's blowing or what, but that transformer on that pole out there was sparking, and it caught my attention. I, I kind of made a face. It wasn't I was <laughs> making a face to anybody that was speaking, but there were sparks coming off that transformer out there, and it just kind of distracted me for a minute, and I wanted to apologize. Maybe, maybe we need management to be looking out that window to make sure we don't have another issue. There at Public Works, yeah. Eric, you're on deck. <laughs> We move now to our first public hearing, rezoning action, hold a public hearing and consider first reading case number 21-22, tax map number 653-00-00010-653-00-0024-653-00-00025 to rezone from BD2 to BD3, three and a half acres in District 1. Ms. Dill. Good evening, everybody, this evening. Um, this is Axe Rezoning, case number 2122 from uh, currently OI to GC, our new, our new districts, but for your information, it's BD2 to BD3. As you mentioned, it's, it's on Highway 160, just uh, west of 77, district number one. It's for three parcels for a total of 3.5 acres. The intention here is to possibly put a, a, a restaurant on this parcel right here, it's a restaurant on 160 with parking in the back. I just want to go back there, give you a better feel of what the area is like. Um, as you can see, it's in between. There's a warehouse to the, uh, to the west. It's next to some apartments and some growing commercial areas on both sides of the property. So it's actually within a lot of already existing commercial areas. Um, the, uh, the zoning for the area here is a combination of there's some PD, there is uh, it's LI, some uh, TND that's Baxter below it, that, the DN, TND below it. The comprehensive plan shows the area for neighborhood residential. So this uh, request actually supports the comprehensive plan because it's located adjacent to an existing commercial area. Staff recommends approval and the planning commission also from nine to zero also recommended approval. Thank you, Diane. Any questions from council? No, Mr. just the state. I, I get, thank you, Diane, on this. First of all, um, this is something that I definitely support. I think it's a, it's a good opportunity from a business perspective to be in there. So uh, again, just want to share that with you all. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak in favor? Is there anyone here who wishes to speak against? Do we have a motion to Move. close public second. hearing? Second. Motion and a second. <laughs> Any discussion? 
All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. Do we have a new motion? Move to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> Hearing none, motion passes. Rezoning action. Hold a public hearing and consider first reading case number 22-01, tax map number 436-00-00013, a portion. Zoning request to rezone from AGC to RUD, one acre in District 5. Ms. Dill. This one, uh, case 2201, AGC to RUD. It's on Madonna Drive in District Number 5. It's actually, it's a one acre portion of a large lot that's 8.9 acres. Um, the applicant is requesting the rezoning because they would like to uh, subdivide the one acre portion of this piece of property and to be able to build a house for the relative. The son lives in that, the greenhouse and she's gonna build the orange house. Um, the rest of the property will re remain AGC. Comprehensive plan of the area. Well, the zoning in the area right now is pretty much AGC. There is some RUD, that like bright green, that's RUD1. The other green is RUD, so there's some in the area. Comprehensive plan does show this as being uh, agricultural, but we uh, typically allow for rezonings here for this one acre tract um, because the uses are so much the same between the two, the difference is just the lot sizes. Um, the VZA did grant an approval for a uh, variance in December to allow this property to access the road without road frontage. There'll be an easement placed across the properties um, to access Madonna Drive. Uh, we recommend approval and so does the Planning Commission. And we also added our typical uh, condition here that because when they do this rezoning, if it's approved by council, this would create a parcel with split zoning. So to come in within 90 days to actually subdivide that one acre so we don't have that split zone parcel. Any Thank you, Ms. Dill. Any questions from council? Is there anyone here who wishes to speak in favor of this request? If you would, please state your name and give your address. Good evening. Um, I'm Brandon Spannenberg. I reside at 4211 Madonna Drive. I'm Deb Spannenberg. I'm the one that has applied for the application for the, um, for the rezoning. And I live at 102 Quarter Horse Lane in Jacksonville, North Carolina at this time. Um, and I just wanted to share uh, the reasons why this was so important to me. Um, I grew up right across the lawn from my grandmother, um, and I could run across the lawn all the time when I get mad at mom. Uh, I'd just run across the lawn <laughs> to uh, Nana and Papa's house and, and hang out with them for a while and cool off. And, um, you know, they really helped raise me a little bit. Um, and that was a huge positive impact on my life. Um, and now I have two boys of my own, and uh, it's really important for me and for them so that they have her in their life and not five hours away. So um, I just wanted to share why it was so important to me. And it's rather important to me because um, Brandon is my only living um, son, my only living child. So um, being five hours away, it's difficult for him to help me. It's also difficult for me to travel five hours. And I very much would appreciate um, if you would be able to approve a rezoning of just that one acre so that I could be close to my son and he could be there for me as I age. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in favor? Is there anyone who wishes to speak against? Move to close. Second. second. Motion and second to close public hearing. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Hearing none, motion passes. Do we have a new motion? Move to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. Welcome home. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Rezoning action. Hold a public hearing and consider first reading. Tax map number 54300-00052 to rezone from ID to RUD, 7.46 acres in District 6. Ms. Dill. This is case number 2202 from ID to RUD on Matthew Simmels Road. It's 7.46 acres. It's currently zoned, as it's shown here, as ID. 
the property right now, I don't have it closer to that one, is actually it's a house. It's always been a house. It was originally zoned ID. I'm not really too sure why, but it has been. They've added on to over the years. It was recently purchased by somebody else, and they want to be able to bring this into the conforming district to be able to, if they choose to, maybe add on another barn. They have some animals there. They want to be able to, to maintain that and just have them zoned properly. So you can see it's currently zoned um, ID. The RDD is right around it. That's what they're requesting to rezone to. It's along uh, Hampton Ridge Road. Um, the comprehensive plan area, it does show this as being neighborhood residential within a, within a node as well. But the area here, um, there's two things. It's very difficult to be able to access Selenese Road from here. So that comprehensive planning plan is really difficult to achieve. That's one part of why we're requesting approval. It's also is because the area around there is already RUD. Um, there's RUD all around that property. So we feel that RUD is, is the appropriate district for this, this parcel. We recommend approval and by 9 to 0, so the Planning Commission. Any, Any questions? questions? Diane, was that, is that property, is it ID because of the fire department? Is that, is that the fire department right in front of it? I Newport don't believe so. No, the fire department's further along because that's um, the Ryan State or new development there. It's further to the, uh, to the east or the west. Okay. okay. Yeah. Any other questions of staff? Thank you, Diane. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak in favor? Hi, thank you. My name is Sean Sides. I live, live at 5062 Matthew Simmel Road. Um, yeah, we purchased, our, my family purchased the property uh, about November of this last year. Uh, it's a beautiful piece of land. It's completely open pasture with some woods and a barn and it was a place we were looking forward to. But then we came to find out that it was zoned industrial, which we thought was really kind of odd. We've had an opportunity to meet some of the neighbors around us, and they all have similar large track, multi-acre properties, kind of farmland, re, you know, it's just a residence. Um, we're really looking to be able to, like as she said, if we would like to expand the barn or we would like to do anything, other type of improvements to the property, uh, right now with it being industrial, it would be non-conforming, so we really would like to get it back to where it needs to be, and we were surprised it was industrial to begin with, so that's really about it, so thank you. Thank you. Anyone else who wishes to speak in favor? Please come forward. Hi, I live right across where the fellow just spoke in industry. No, I want a residential like my home. Did you give your address? Did you state your address? I didn't write anything down. I live at 5078. Matthew Sumrall. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else wish to speak in favor? Is there anyone who wishes to speak against? Move to close. Motion and a second to close public hearing. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. Do we have a new motion? Move to approve. Second. second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. We move now to old business rezoning action. Consider a third reading, case number 21-25, tax map number 434-00-00019 to rezone from AGC to RUD, one acre in District 5. Move to approve third reading. Second. second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? I will say this is my district, and this is one of those that I struggled with a little bit simply because there are individuals on the road who had reached out and were con concerned about having um, too many homes on this area, that this would somehow set a precedent that would be difficult for um, council or planning commission to draw back. I have spent a lot of time researching this and talking with a couple of folks who had some issues. I've had overwhelming number of, of other neighbors and residents who have reached out in support. I do support this um, for these reasons. Rezonings are by their nature fact specific and I did confirm with legal and with planning that none of this and none of what we approve is, is precedent setting such that we have to approve anything like this moving forward. Um, this does not obligate us to make any future decisions for new construction and I would, I would specifically be op opposed to new construction that would um, exceed the amount of acreage that's required for that road. Staff and Planning Commission unanimously agreed with and, and approved this rezoning. We're not adding any new homes 
on the property there's no new traffic um, in the property it will allow the property to be opened up for home ownership which is um, a good thing um, there are another no other instances where where on this road where this looks like to be an issue the ap applicant has now stated publicly that he does not intend to um, and will not subdivide his existing five acre parcel and that it there is a right of first refusal to his property as well um, so I do approve this all those in favor of the motion say aye aye, aye. any opposed hearing none motion passes we move now to new business council to approve award of bid number 2809 regarding US 321 Johnson Railroad Avenue intersection improvement construction project project number 11149-008C to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder mm -hmm. Carolina Civil LLC of Clover South Carolina for a total cost of two million seventy four thousand seven hundred fifty dollars and seventy cents and to further approve the transfer of the necessary funds for this project move to approve second motion and a second any discussion all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed Hearing none, motion passes. Council to adopt a resolution ratifying and confirming the, the addition of Anderson Crane and Bridge Technologies, Inc. as a sponsor affiliate to the fee in lieu of ad valorem taxes agreement between York County, South Carolina and Anderson Hydro Platforms, Inc. company as a sponsor and other related matters. Move to approve. Second. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. I, I don't think we had any, we had unanimous votes this entire night, did we? I think we did. Welcome <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> no, wait, what, uh, well, we I can see the wheels turning. Yeah. <laughs> now we're starting. Well, never mind. Okay. <laughs> we move on to committee and other reports. Health and Environmental Protection Committee, uh, Chairman Tom Aldette. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, so at the committee meeting we had, which included Councilman Winkler and Councilwoman Love, we had three different items that we talked about during the meeting. Um, one was a review um, of the agritourism and education proposal by uh, Watts Huckabee. Um, after the discussion, it was um, understood that it appears that um, from a financing perspective there, there wouldn't be the financing, but they still would like to move forward with reestablishing their committee. So more discussion to come around that. Um, we also did talk um, about the data walk, which is March 25th. Now this data walk, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make sure everybody has the document. Um, I've registered for it, and I think Robert has too. But the way this data walk is, is that um, DHAC is coming into Rock Hill, and they're going to look at the health issues that are affecting the community. And it's a two-hour meeting. And then from there, um, as part of the committee, what we're going to do is we're going to look to establish some type of screening day for the county, and that's based on statistics that we've seen from this data we're getting from DHOC. So I'll send you the information. It is open to the public also, too, but it's very good information. I'm looking forward to this um, update. Um, the last piece is we did have a um, review done of the Catawba Bend Park, so um, that went very well, and that concluded the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Aldette. Economic and Development Committee meeting, Chairman Joel Hamilton. <laughs> Economic Development Committee met this evening prior to our regular council meeting. Um, present were Councilman Love as well as Councilman Audette. Um, so we had full attendance. Um, but we did hear an update from our Economic Development Director, Mr. Swenson, um, regarding our um, Economic Development Board and worked our way through some proposals. We haven't, didn't come to a conclusion or finish the discussion. We look forward to continuing that in our next regular committee meeting. Thank you, Mr. Hamilton. Council Member New Non Agenda Comments. Mr. Roddy. I want to start off by saying that um, good to see everyone back on another Monday night. Um, my, my comment tonight is I'm definitely going to address the elephant in the room or the elephant in the Carolinas. Um, my phone was ringing off the hook this afternoon from reporters talking about this Carolina Panthers deal. And I know we've had some discussion about what's been going on. Um, started last May 2021 about the city of Rock Hill securing this financing to move the Panthers deal forward. Well, today I think the, the situation came to a head with um, the Panthers announcing that Rock Hill hasn't paid the money, they're halting the project, and I just wanna go on camera, go on record of reaching out saying, 
to those over at the city of Rock Hill, those with the Carolina Panthers, it's time that we get this deal done. For the city of Rock Hill to reach out to York County, let's move forward, let's work together, um, let's avoid any possible disasters down the road. So my message tonight is to the mayor of Rock Hill, the city council of Rock Hill, the city manager of Rock Hill, its attorneys of Rock Hill, let's get together and get this deal done to avoid any possible litigation. We just heard tonight about how we're spending tax, taxpayers' dollars in lawsuits. Well, if we don't get this deal worked out, it's going to be some big, big lawsuits. And our York County taxpayers, our Cedar Rock Hill taxpayers are going to be on the hook for something that we didn't sign up for. We know our power here at York County. We know we can get this deal done. So I'm reaching out to the city of Rock Hill and all the major players with the city. Reach out to us in an official capacity so we can move forward to get this deal done. I just want to invite everybody over to Clover Friday night for the kickoff for St. Patrick's Day and then for the St. Patrick's Day Festival downtown Clover that will be, uh, I think it's from 10 to 4 on um, Saturday. And it's um, been a couple years since we've had that. So we're looking for a big green turnout over in Clover. Mr. Winkler. Um, I'll just uh, want to say, I last council meeting, I let the members of the council sitting up here know some news about me and I posted on my Facebook page shortly after that. But I'm publicly stating it in council meeting tonight. So the public sees and hears it from me. I have decided that I am not filing for re-election. So this will be my last year sitting here representing District 3. Um, I thank the citizens for the last eight years that it'll be when I finish. Um, and I will say that I've see, um, I've heard several people were going to run. I do see one in the audience who has officially said he's going to run, and that's Mr. Tommy Atkins sitting back there in the back with the ball cap on. So uh, good to see him sitting in here and trying to see how things go. So, um, But I did want to just publicly let everyone know I appreciate the trust in me and I'm here for the next nine and a half months so I'm not going anywhere you can still call me you, can, you know we'll still work together but this is my last year at this thank you Mr. Mr. Hamilton um, well we had some basketball games over the past couple of weeks we did. Um, one of which was the Rock Hill High Bearcat girls won their first state championship so I wanted to congratulate them and also the uh, Winter Beagles played in the Big South championship um, Yesterday, although the, the outcome wasn't what we expected, the, the community came out and supported the team. Um, and even though it's a loss, we have a first year coach in Mark Prosser, made it all the way to the Big South Championship. I say Mr. Roddy was in attendance for that game as well. So I appreciate the support of Winthrop University. And uh, we look forward to continuing to build on with that program. So, Mr. Aldette. Okay. Well, first of all, Robert, thank you for your service there. Appreciate you. Um, one thing I do want to mention, um, being a father of five daughters, um, this bill that is currently in front of the House and Senate on the state level, which is Bill H-4608, is very, very uh, near and dear to me um, and my family and any other uh, woman that plays women's sports or lady or girl plays women's. This bill is critical that is passed because this bill will protect the sovereignty of women's sports across the board. And it's currently being uh, reviewed by the House and Senate right now and the state level. I'd recommend please reach out to your legislators because again, this is critical to protect women's sports. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Mr. Hamilton stole a little bit of my thunder. Um, I did, as a 1993 graduate of Rock Hill High School, I was very excited to see the girls win the first ever five, five star state championship for basketball that we certainly didn't have a record like they did but i'm very proud of them and it's exciting for our community i would love for staff to please reach out to their coach and invite them to our council so that we can recognize them formally uh, that's a big day for us and and for women's sports here in york county uh, at this time we'll move on to citizen concerns charles graham to address council regarding mental health awareness and the current current fentanyl crisis as you make your way, if you'll please state your name and give your address, and just so folks who sometimes don't understand, this is a time for folks to come speak. Uh, we ask that your comments stay between five to ten minutes, as we still have um, business to conduct in, in the meeting. And council does not answer questions or interact. This is our time to hear you. So a lot of folks, you know, sometimes they ask questions and feel like we're being rude for not responding. That's what we do. It's our time to hear. My name's Charles Graham. And I live at 6970 Montgomery Road uh, in Lake Wiley. 
I resided there for 38 years, something like that. So good evening. I understand that your positions are many times thankless and difficult, but I, I guess it comes with a job, unfortunately, and I'm certain that all of you do the best with the resources that you have and are good people or you would not be serving the community. I'm here to advocate for my son, Eldon Graham, and the other 100,306 people that perished as a result of fentanyl-laced drugs from April 2020 to April 2021. Mental illness and drug use often go hand in hand. I emailed Friday a copy of a letter to each of you that I'd sent to the U.S. Congressman Burchett out of Knoxville thanking him for his proactive stance on this matter. I've been a resident of York County in the Lake Wiley community for 35 years. I have four children, all of which attended Clover District Schools. Death rates for York County, this information directly from the DHEC uh, uh, for the year 2020, which was the available, uh, the most current and comprehensive summary available showing an alarming trend for the community. There were 190 deaths in 16, and in 2020 there were 1,100 deaths in South Carolina attributable to fentanyl. York County was in the top 10. In York County, there were 103 deaths in 21. In 20, there were only 47. The number has doubled and the trend is rising. As we all know, trends never remain the same. They're either going up or going down. The upward trend suggests that we're not, that what we're doing is not working. The entire world is on the edge of their seat as people perish in the Ukraine conflict, but our government accepts over 100,000 deaths attributed to an illegal substance with no effective way to reverse the trend. Lancaster County most recent census population is 106,000. With this in mind, this drug would have wiped out the entire county. Gastonia has a current population of 78,000. These numbers give some perspective to the fentanyl death rate in one year uh, nationally. Mental health disease off, off, also uh, often accompanies the use of illegal drugs. South Carolina has 16 publicly funded mental hospitals, one for our defined region that has a population of about a half a million. The public treatment facilities and resources for people with mental disease is scarce, not just in our county, but nationwide. Recently, Steve Smith, a former Carolina Panther great, and his foundation has been proactively creating mental health clinics that can serve the community and support the treatment of the disease in the Charlotte area. Admittedly, I am not up to speed on the council's, council's formal, former charter. However, as representatives of the community and stewards of the budget, I implore, you, I implore you to be receptive and proactive to measures that can be taken to help reduce deaths. The line item in the budget specifically allocated to the treatment and care for mental health disease is necessary. Uh, I couldn't find, I looked at the budget and just, I was unable to discern uh, where that was where that line item laid up. Maybe it was in several different categories. As I reviewed the county budget, it was difficult to ascertain how much of the county's budget is allocated specifically for this disease and its treatment. I'm not suggesting throwing money at the problem as a solution, however, a line item and its correlation to effective treatment would be a, a, a way to measure progress. There is a strong correlation to drug abuse and mental health and rates of incarceration, all of which cost the county money and resources. <clears throat> so what should be done? Examples of measures would be specific mandatory classes for all children in the district at the appropriate age regarding man, uh, fentanyl and mental health awareness at the time that they are the most vulnerable, 15, 16 years old, and before they go off to college. Also creating a committee to explore different ways to make a difference in our community. I've offered the school district my personal time to engage in whatever they deem appropriate to wise up our youth. In fact, I'm meeting with school district officials tomorrow to discuss this very subject urging our state legislators, U.S. Senators, and U.S. Congressional representatives to support and lobby for all the bill, for the bill Congressman Burchett is sponsoring. I have personally, along with many of my friends, written asking for support and have found our representatives accessible, except for Senator Graham and Scott. All of you have been more than likely uh, have contacts in state government and U.S. government, and, and please lobby for change and help. Funding allocated from the recent lawsuit involving the class action suit against opioid manufacturers will result in $300 million to South Carolina, distributed to all 46 counties and 43 municipalities. How will this money be spent and allocated in York County and surrounding municipalities? A line item should be provided in the budget for these funds and accountability for proper use to assist in programs and law enforcement to combat this scourge. This is not only the appropriate thing to do, but also the moral thing to do. These funds need to be earmarked to help reduce deaths in our county due to fentanyl. 
Mental illness, of which my son suffered, and the protocol and facilities to treat these diseases is Stone Age and Borderline Barbaric in York County. For many years, these diseases, as cancer in the 60s, carried a stigma and shame with it, and it was not addressed properly. In fact, you didn't discuss it outside the family. Mental illness has been recognized much more effectively recently, but there's a long way to go. In Mecklenburg County, for example, if you have an emergency, they send a team of mental health professionals to the home or place of incident to evaluate and act accordingly to the situation. Protocol in, in York County, as I have experienced it, shows up, the sheriff shows up in handcuffs, the person involved transport, transports them to the hospital, they're triaged and then placed in the appropriate facility. This body can make a difference and must. How many more need perish before we openly acknowledge mental illness and its proper treatment and the horrific proliferation of fentanyl to our use provided like a wolf in sheep's clothing? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Graham. And thank you for waiting patiently as the other business was conducted. Do we have a motion for executive session? We do. Move that we go into executive session for the receipt of legal advice relating to a contractual matter regarding um, bond issue due diligence contracts. Also for the receipt of legal advice relating to an update on ongoing litigation matters. We have two additional executive session items. Um, out of this evening, one is relating to a contractual matter regarding agency real property acquisition, and the other is another contractual matter relating to emergency procurement um, change orders regarding the McKelvey Center. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, we'll move into executive session in five minutes. <clears throat> if session no action was taken, do we have any motions? We do. Our first motion is to authorize our county attorney to ratify and approve due diligence contracts relating to bond issuance. Move to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. Our second motion is to approve an emergency procurement change order from Scaffolding Solutions relating to the McKelvey Center. Move to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. The third and final motion is to authorize staff to engage and negotiate agency uh, regarding property acquisition. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. Move to adjourn. Second. 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 We are adjourned. So we're adjourned.